It has been 10 years since the water crisis in the Kanawha Valley. It sent people to the hospital, it closed doors and businesses. It became a, a generally rational event that people still talk about. So in a WSAZ investigation, News Channel 3's Kimberly Keggy sat down with the president of West Virginia American Water to find out the steps they've taken since that crisis to ensure your water is safe to drink. It started with a sweet licorice-like smell. I can't really smell good, but I can smell it. Just like everybody says, licorice. The extremely foul uh, smell of licorice. Little did the hundreds of thousands living around the Kanawha Valley know at that time that smell was actually the result of a chemical spill into the Elk River. One that hours later would send off a series of chaotic events. Gallons or bottles? Yeah. Gallons. We're just glad that they have water, but it's obvious you can stop panic. Who knows how long this is going to take? January 9th, 2014. At 10 a.m., the Department of Environmental Protection receives complaints about the licorice smell. Around 11 a.m., the DEP finds a leak at Freedom Industries. That leak sending a chemical used in coal preparation known as MCHM, into the Elk River. Then an hour later, the DEP sounds the alarm to West Virginia American Water. Shortly before 6, West Virginia American Water tells 300,000 people in the area, do not use your tap water. We don't do this lightly to tell our customers not to use the water. Do not drink it, do not cook with it, uh, do not wash clothes in it, do not take a bath in it. Hundreds went to the hospital for symptoms they believed were linked to exposure. And then the scramble to find usable water was on. The days that followed were unlike anything anyone here had ever experienced. I got like 400 gallons of water yesterday and it's gone. Schools and businesses shut down. Neighbors in disbelief wondering what would happen next. I don't know how much, how long this community can stand to live like this and how unfair it is to a, a great group of people that did nothing to deserve this. The National Guard then went zone by zone, testing the water, lifting that do not use order in areas where results showed it was safe. By January 18th, all areas were able to use their water again. But that was just the beginning of a long road to rebuilding trust when turning on the tap. West Virginia American Water President Rob Burton wasn't with the company at that time. He came on board at Pennsylvania American Water in 2015, then becoming president of West Virginia American Water in 2019. It's been 10 years since the chaos unfolded during the water crisis. Five years into Burton's role as president, I wanted to know what steps the company has taken to protect families from a similar situation and get confidence flowing again among customers. There is a group that still believes that their water is not safe. They choose not to drink it. Mm -hmm. How do you repair that? How do you restore that relationship? You know, at the end of the day, there may be some folks who you know, very small pockets that, that may always feel away. And that doesn't mean we don't talk to them, doesn't mean we don't educate them, doesn't mean we don't provide the information. But I think the vast majority of folks do get it that, you know, things aren't what they were. We are trying to do the right things. Again, I think we were before him, but again, that focus, that laser focus on it. The company says it learned valuable lessons from the water crisis and made changes that puts them in a much better position should another crisis happen. Burton says at the time of the chemical spill in 2014, water sample testing was something the company contracted out at that plant. But now they've installed new technology that allows them to run their own samples. Burton believes if this system was in place in 2014, the plant could have identified a contaminant was in the water. In a situation when there, let's say, would be a chemical spill, this gets you guys 10 steps ahead oh, quicker yeah. than another company. Essentially, use it for what we call like early warning or for process. Okay. Process. And then if we find something that's maybe of that actual regulatory type concern, mm -hmm. while we're making decisions around that process information, we can confirm it for the actual you know, regulatory side as well. Yeah. Kind of a two-step verification process. Right. Burton says the company also has extensive source water protection plans in place. Plans that include training, exercise drills, and collaborations with other agencies. It's an understanding of what potential risks are. It's an understanding of 
um, you know, what is the inherent water quality of your source and what you need to do from a treatment facility standpoint. Those plans put to the test when a train derailed in East Palestine, Ohio last year. And while that's about five hours north of Huntington, the incident sent a million pounds of hazardous chemicals into the soil, air and water including the Ohio River. Downstream in Huntington, West Virginia American Water got to work trying to alleviate concerns of those chemicals making their way to water here. You know, we did a few things very quickly. Uh, we put together uh, protocols for uh, how we would sample. We put together protocols of what we might would do from a treatment standpoint if we needed to treat the water. And we also put plans in place and, and actually within a 72 hour period, uh, constructed a temporary intake on the Guyandot River and laid almost two thirds of a mile of 24 inch water main that we could serve our treatment plant there in Huntington uh, with water from the Guyandot instead of taking it from the Ohio River. Ultimately, the company did not have to use that system, but Burton says the moves made since the water crisis helped shape a quick response. Do you think that from the 2014 incident that was a teachable moment? I think the big lessons learned again was, you know, being good is having, uh, knowing that, okay, I need to sample on the river. Being good is knowing I need to call and talk to BPH, you know, Bureau of Public Health. I need to call and talk to Orsanko. Mm -hmm. Being good is I need to call a lab to maybe come do some samples for me. Uh, being good is I may need to shut down my plant. Um, taking it that step further is, again, I talk to those people all the time. So it's not I'm cold calling. It's I'm partnering with them. It's I have the facilities already in my treatment facility that I can do the testing, I can do the sampling, I can right. do that work right here. Burton says that while the water crisis is always in the back of their minds, moving forward is focused on providing better service and staying ahead of any potential problems. And we can't get stagnant with that. And I think that's a big lesson to learn for all of us is it's easy to get into a mindset of we're doing well, I'm doing well. That's you have to be okay. I'm doing well, but I have to keep pushing that and have to keep getting better, I have to keep, you know, providing more, more, if you will. And I think, again, we talked earlier about, you know, what's the comfort level for, for, for our customers, for the folks that live out here. I think it's that commitment from us that we're not only trying to be really good today, we're trying to constantly be even better tomorrow, yeah. and that's not going to stop. Now, as far as improvements in recent years, the company also completed a $25 million upgrade in August of 2022, installing ultraviolet lights that help kill microscopic organisms in the water. West Virginia American Water says if you're wondering about the cost of that water bill, though, the PSC recently did approve the company's latest rate hike request. And so I asked the company president, Rob Burton, about that rate hike, and he says you can't have improvements in infrastructure upgrades without that money coming in, Sarah. All right. Thank you so much, Kimberly. And West Virginia American Water says that that company mm -hmm. uh, has received the exemplary source of water protection award. This was in 2021 for their actions to improve the source water protection program. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.